Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Friday, September 14th, Market Watchers Live Show with your host, Aaron Swenlin, and guest co host today, Mary Ellen McConaughey. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. Let's go ahead and check what has been going on in the market since we have started today. All right, here we go. All right, as you can see, the markets are mostly up today. We've got the Dow Jones up almost 54 points. Currently, S&P 500 up two and three quarters of a point. Trading mostly sideways, did start the day opening higher, but made a trip down to negative territory, but is now on the positive side, consolidating near the intraday high. NASDAQ is also up but has stayed mostly positive throughout the day. Look at small caps. Small caps are having a fabulous day with the Russell 2000 up 11 and a quarter points. We also see the treasury yields are all up as well. 2.996 is currently the reading for the 10 year treasury yield. VIX is falling. We're now under just under 12 at 11.98. Gold is not doing so well, as you can see, falling currently. Uh, GLD is at 113.39. The leading sectors right now are energy and financials, both doing very well today. We had a few stocks in the news that did report earnings. As we can see, Adobe is now up uh, on its earnings beat. Uh, but it was actually down almost 1% at the start of trading today. So it's made uh, quite a move. Uh, we could see that Kroger had disappointing guidance and is down about 0.3% right now. Looks like uh, the news was about to arrive earlier. We could see this drop that we had, uh, the big gap down yesterday, and now we're really consolidating sideways. Although Kroger, like I said, is currently down 0.3%. And Sears, interestingly, up almost 7.5% today on what was not a good earnings report. Uh, the meeting today was not good. Uh, they showed sales declines in their stores, but apparently uh, the investors aren't too worried about that as it is up higher, like I said, 7.44%. I think it was up uh, almost 20% uh, at one point today, or at least 15%. So that was pretty interesting uh, to note. All right, time to start the show though. I wanna introduce my guest co-host today, Mary Ellen. Looks like we're Hello. gonna have some uh, woman power going on today. That's right, girl power. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're not too far from each other, and we're both enjoying splendid weather. I can tell you that here in Southern California. Absolutely, yes. Yes, Mary Ellen no. actually started the day on, where were you this morning? I was uh, overlooking the ocean in Santa Barbara, California, and a uh, beautiful, beautiful day here, just gearing up for, for a lovely weekend. Yeah. So, uh, overlooking the ocean. Lovely. Uh, Quite nice. Course. First, we have to do this exciting show. Yes. It will be yes. very exciting. And actually, uh, we have a very good week coming up next week. So let me go ahead and go over that upcoming schedule. We're looking at uh, my workshop on Tuesday, and I will be doing it on step-by-step -step scanning. So I'll be helping you uh, learn not only how to create uh, your own scan, but really a lot about how to manipulate uh, your various scans and manipulate those predefined scans. David Keller will be here on Wednesday, the mindful investor. Julius de Kempener will be here uh, to go over RRGs on Thursday. So really exciting week coming up. Uh, and I do have the sentiment update next week on Friday, but we have that today as well. Today's agenda, we're going to start off after technical news with Mary Ellen. She's going to show us what's hot and what's not. I think you're going to really enjoy that segment. 10 and 10 to 1, Mary Ellen has graciously agreed to do the annotations of the 10 stocks. So go ahead and put your requests in the chat room. Adobe will be our first one. And then, as I mentioned, I will be finishing off with the sentiment update. Well, let's go ahead and, and talk about the technical news and headlines that are going on right now. 
I'm going to go ahead and share with you uh, the XAU chart. I did want to note that the gold and silver index, despite GLD being lower, uh, the gold and silver index is actually up almost 1% today. So I found that to be pretty interesting. Look at the PMO right now on the gold and silver index, really lining up nicely uh, on a PMO buy signal as well. We did have quite a few economics reports come out today, and I'm gonna actually show you where I go to get those. This is briefing.com. This is where we get our upgrades and downgrades. But I go to the economic counter, uh, calendar on Econo Day. So as you can see, we had quite a few reports coming in today. Uh, first was retail sales. And right now we're, we had a 0.1% uh, growth versus 0.4%, which is what they had expected. Uh, retail sales less auto sales was 0.3% versus 0.4%. 5%. So we did see a little bit of a contraction there. Uh, the good news was, though, that they did do an upward revision of the July numbers, uh, but they didn't they didn't account for this flat August that we were going to have. Uh, so they the projections were still rather high. Uh, we've got industrial production. This was our other. I'm going to go ahead first and take you back to our homepage and set up that market summary for you to pay attention to while I'm looking at all of these. And here we go. All right, and there you go with the major indexes. All right, uh, industrial production. That was another economic report that came out today. Uh, production came in 0.4%, uh, which was the expected amount. Manufacturing came in just a little bit low lower at 0.2% versus the 0.3% that they were expecting. Uh, they're saying that the strength in mining and utilities really offset the softness in manufacturing, and that's uh, what helped lift production 0.4% uh, higher in August. And apparently auto production was also strong in August. It was up 4%, but unfortunately it didn't help the manufacturing number as a whole. Business inventories came in 0.6% versus 0.5% expected. A large rise in the consensus uh, for these inv uh, business inventories in July. Uh, you know, we had a constructive build and that would help narrow that gap with underlying sales, which have been very strong. So business inventories up slightly. Consumer sentiment was up today, 100.8 versus the 97 expected, moving higher uh, in its strongest showing since March of this year. And this is also uh, the strongest since 2004 on consumer sentiments. People are feeling pretty good. Uh, the gain is led by the assessment of current conditions, uh, which is up about six, six points. Uh, and the gain is really, this big gain hints at a jump higher for September consumer spending. But we'll have that report, like I said, uh, in October. A couple of headlines, headline news, a, a few in the news, stocks, Snap is in the news. And now I kind of see why it had been upgraded yesterday. Remember, I was very down on Snap. Of course, it's up a little over a quarter of a percent today. Um, but apparently there's, uh, you know, some media chatter about a possible pickup by Alphabet, Google, um, talking about uh, a potential buyout of Snap. So that could be really interesting. Uh, cannabis, pharmaceuticals, and this one is CNBX. Go ahead and look at that one. Uh, it says that one of its cannabinoid compounds dem demonstrated a greater ability to kill cancer cells than traditional chemo in a preclinical study. There's not any more information on that, but you know, with that, <laughs> you can see we had almost we're at almost a 30% gain right now for cannabis for pharmaceuticals. All right, so let's look at another one we had in the news and that would be Intel. And there's some problems going on with these chip makers right now. And Intel is one of them. They have, uh, they're really, their chip, they're getting into a really bad uh, chip shortage. And so right now they're saying that could reduce their fourth quarter PC shipments 
by five to seven percent. Um, interestingly, though, Intel currently is down only eight cents on the day. And you can see the PMO is trying to get ready to turn up. So that's pretty interesting as well. Caterpillar was another one that uh, was in the news. It's actually it's actually reported a 23% year-to-year increase in its worldwide machine retail sales uh, for the rolling three-month period ending in August. Uh, roughly, that was flat from the res results in June and July. But overall, uh, the worldwide machine retail sales going well for Caterpillar. Uh, currently, Caterpillar is down 0.43%. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let me talk to you about a few key earnings that have come in today. Uh, FedEx is going to actually uh, report after the bell today. So let's go ahead and look at the FedEx chart very quickly. And as you can see, I, I really like the FedEx chart because of course my PMO is doing exactly what I wanna see it do. It has gone into a buy signal. We're now getting readings higher than the previous top. And you can see we did break out above this short term resistance level and now it is trading above it so that's a pretty interesting stock we'll have to see what happens with earnings general mills is going to report its earnings uh, before the bell on monday it's been mostly in this uh, consolidation range but you know if you annotate it i find something rather interesting is a chart pattern and let's see get this right there an ascending triangle chart pattern these are bullish chart patterns. And so the expectation actually would be <clears throat> a move to the upside, a breakout from this particular formation. And it could have an upside target about the length of the back of this particular formation. And that, of course, would bring us up to about the $52 range, which interestingly matches up with the support level in February, uh, a gap also in February, as well as the March top here, which was uh, is very interesting. So I could certainly see that as a possibility. Of course, it's hard to say what will happen after earnings. It could be, we know how it works. You can report good earnings and have a really bad day or like Sears today, you can report really bad earnings and have a great day. So uh, just to, to be aware of that. Let's see, AutoZone is going to report as well. Um, before the bell on Monday. Let's see, let me get the right. I thought I had the right one. There we go. AZO. All right, you can see it's sitting here right now on, you know, mostly on support. It did drop down a little below it yesterday and it has dropped down a little below it today, but it is currently trading above that support area. Uh, but I don't like the chart. I've got, you know, a PMO that is turning down on a PMO sell signal, OBV volume going the wrong way, and the scooter, while it is rather high, uh, is starting to show deterioration at this point. All right, let's look at a couple of up upgrades and downgrades. The first one I have for you is uh, Coca-Cola European. And this one, interesting, was upgraded by two companies today, Wells Fargo and Susquehanna. Uh, Wells Fargo moved it from a market perform to an outperform, and Susquehanna gave it a, a neutral, uh, moving it from a negative position, so negative to neutral. And you can see that we're in, uh, enjoying quite a rally, uh, a rally that really started this week with that gap up uh, on, let's see, Friday, Thursday, on uh, Wednesday. Uh, you can see the PMO, though, is getting very overbought right now, and I would just be watching this closely. If I were, if I had it, I'd certainly be holding it, um, and if I weren't, I would be waiting for it to at least uh, try and get down here to the 45 or 44 level toward that, that uh, breakaway gap that we saw. I'd want to see a little bit more of a pullback here, and possibly the PMO decompressing a bit. All right, another upgrade. Corning. This one was upgraded by Citigroup from a neutral to a buy. It already was having a rather, uh, you know, splendid uh, rally that started yesterday. And you can see that it's continuing higher. Uh, we are up about three quarters of a percent right now on Corning. 
and we've got a PMO buy signal that just kicked in. You know, I, if I'd seen this chart earlier, I would have noted another ascending triangle formation. And given that the upside target would have been about $2, and we've hit that right now. So I would just, uh, word of caution there, uh, but we did get the, the move, that intraday high up to 36, it is pulling back. Uh, watch this one closely. HP, not Hewlett Packard, uh, Helmerich and Payne, I'm probably pronouncing them wrong, got a, a bear kiss here, or a bull kiss, it came down, uh, kissed the signal line and is now heading back up. I like to see those types of formation uh, formations. Uh, interesting OBV, it is moving up, but you know, if you look at the volume in the thumbnail here on this rally you can see we have seen mostly a decline in the volume a little bit so i'd be a little bit uh, concerned about that we did get that big gap up turned out to be an island we ended up with it that gap closing very quickly all right another upgrade for you we have paypal which was upgraded today a lot of interesting new uh, upgrades and downgrades today for sure you can see that with paypal though it is down almost a half a percent yesterday it hit that overhead resistance it did uh, post an intraday high uh, that was higher than that previous top but it did fall back down uh, and if i suspect if i looked at this as a candlestick it would look very much like that uh, shooting star which does tell you to expect some downside move so interestingly paypal is down even after a raymond james upgrade from a market perform to an outperform all right another upgrade i have for you regency realty this was upgraded by citigroup from a neutral to a buy and you know interestingly it's not helping <laughs> the upgrade uh is not it's down uh one in uh Two thirds of a percent here, 1.66 percent uh, currently on Regency Realty Group. I have a PMO sell signal. I'm sure if I had been sitting there doing the uh, analysis, I would certainly not have been getting giving it an upgrade. If anything, I think I would be downgrading it based on what I'm seeing as far as the momentum, the drop in the scooter. And now you can see there's that penetration of that short term area of support currently trading below it. All right, a couple of downgrades, and then I'll be passing it back to Mary Ellen. All right, Costco, Wells Fargo downgraded this from outperform to appear perform. And we can see we are down two and a third percent today on that downgrade by, let's see, yes, uh, Wells Fargo, I think I already noted that. PMO it has topped now, really partly because of that rounded top we were already seeing on Costco. Uh, big gap down now and trading near the intraday lows. Uh, you know, there is support lining up here in the short term, I'd say, at that one little August top that we saw. Uh, I'd watch for that to find the support there. Uh, but again, with the PMO turning down like I'm seeing it, I would actually expect a move uh, lower to maybe the 225 area at least. All right, another downgrade for us, Dunkin' Donuts, DNK. Let's see, I think that was it, Dunkin'. Yep, Dunkin' Brands. And this was downgraded today by RBC Capital Markets from outperform to a sector perform. And you can see it's already coming down to test that overhead resistance from the July top. Uh, I could see it moving even further to, to uh, support down here at that August top as well. Notice the PMO, of course, is turned over. Uh, we were already seeing that rounded top forming on Duncan Brands. And the last one I have for us is Tandem Diabetes Care. We get, look at this one a lot in the 10 and 10. So I figured you'd be interested. This one, Robert Baird uh, downgraded it from outperform to a neutral, and it is down almost seven and two thirds percent right now, 7.62% down on this downgrade currently. It's dropped below that top that we saw earlier uh, in September, and it does look to be coming down to test probably that $40 range where we had that intraday low earlier in the month. Look at the PMO, got a PMO sell signal in the making here. Uh, it wouldn't go official until after the uh, close. 
And that is all I have for the technical news and headlines. Boy, it was jam-packed today. Mm. Hope, hope they were able to keep up, Mary Ellen. So, <laughs> you that, had quite a, quite a lot there. That was... Yes. All right. Now Wonderful. I'm going to go rest my voice and get ready for my sentiment report and pass it to you. I will be looking at uh, questions in the chat room uh, for Mary Ellen. I'll be uh, asking those at the end of her presentation. So uh, go ahead and put those in and I'm going to just say go for it. <laughs> oh, you bet. Sounds great. So yes, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal and I'm going to be today reviewing what is hot and what is not. And it's going to be based on the action that we've seen this week. So basically a review of where the markets have really shown strength and outshined uh, areas that have outshown the rest of the market. And for those of you not familiar, I do tend to traffic in high growth stocks. I'm, my work is with MEM Investment Research. I'm on the prowl for that next big winning stock. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. This week, the first stock that I'm showing you here is Kronos Group, C-R-O-N. And you can see over the last two days, we're seeing a, a little bit of a drop. I guess it's up a little today, but this particular stock is a recreational marijuana stock. And I'm pointing this out to you. We'll review some other stocks in this industry group as well. But it really uh, has picked up steam here recently. You can see taking you back into August, a lot of these stocks had significant moves. And for the most part, they are retaining them and adding to those moves. A lot of it is because in Canada on October 17th, they are expected to uh, federally uh, legalize recreational cannabis. And that is a huge market. It's the first uh, G7 country to actually possibly legalize recreational cannabis. And the expectation, of course, is that there will be a lot in the way of revenues and uh, for these companies. The other item that is pushing a lot of these stocks up is there has been interest in these companies by uh, other tobacco companies, as well as alcohol beverage companies. And what they're doing is they are partnering with these uh, recreational company, I'm sorry, recreational cannabis companies. So let's take a look. There is another one, CGC is the ticker symbol. And this particular stock is Canopy Growth. And they received a, uh, let me see if I can get this ticker symbol here. Uh, they received a $4 billion investment from Constellation Brands. And you can see the nice pickup here, the move that the stock had in response. Now, I will tell you, these stocks are explosive in their moves, not only to the upside, but to the downside. So they are quite volatile. You'll see double digit moves in a single day. So I did review this on my show on Monday morning in the sense that you can, uh, for those of you that are not shy about your investing and, and volatility is not something that you uh, would stay away from, you can use intraday charting and for instance, perhaps a one hour chart. It's not something that I do certainly on a regular basis at all, but you can see how it would be helpful because you could capture these upswings and then get out of the stock as it starts to deteriorate. So that's one area that I did want to point out that's been continuing to uh, play out well. The another area in the markets, and Aaron did talk about PayPal having an upgrade today. This is the payment processors group. And let's go ahead and get to a regular back to a daily price chart for that. And and actually a weekly can give us an even better picture as far as longer term and how these stocks have been picking up. So a lot of these mobile payment processing companies have been really outperforming the markets. And what we are seeing here is mobile payments. It's really an expanding area. It has gone from 450 billion in transactions in 2015 to almost uh, double. We're we're actually at 900 billion 
today. So you can see that that industry group is really moving and there is an expectation that it's going to expand to 1.1 trillion next year. So we can take a look at another stock, GPN, that is in the payment processing area. And I'll tell you another driver for this particular industry group. And Aaron did talk about consumer confidence, consumer sentiment, and we are at an 18-year high. Consumers are very, very confident. We're seeing unemployment at a 19-year low. So consumers are more open with their purses, so to speak, but we're also seeing corporate spending picking up. And so these payment processors, you can even talk about a company uh, this is Global Payment, GPN, and as the name implies, they are uh, a global, as is a company such as MasterCard, and the ticker symbol for that is MA, for those of you not familiar. And you can see that MasterCard, we're looking at a daily price chart here. And when I look at these charts, I like to have the RSI on the upper portion and the MACD down below. And a lot of work for me is with simple moving averages. So this green line is your 10 day simple moving average. The red is your 50 and the blue is your 200 day simple moving average. Quite simply, these are smoothed out lines that are showing you, for instance, with the green, it's the price over the last 10 days. And you like to see stocks finding support above these two shorter term key simple moving averages. So with MasterCard, you can see the stock pulled back to its 50 day simple moving average into a buy zone and it is continuing its uptrend. So MasterCard again is certainly a stock in that payment processing area. And then of course we can also take a look at Visa, another one that is also in this payment processing area. So pointing out to you that this has been a very dynamic area, but it continues to be in very, very strong uptrend. And the terminology is fintech. So for those of you who have been staying on top of the expansion in that area, one last stock we can take a look at here is Square. Ticker symbol is SQ. And this is a newer one, certainly to this space, but they are been really explosive in their growth. The company is now uh, released a new app where they are accepting payments uh, at restaurants, point of sale. They also have a restaurant delivery service called Caviar. And so not only do they take care of the delivery, but also the point of sale payment processing. So they're in that consumer space all in. Uh, so the payment processors, and let's take a look at one other area that has been super strong within technology. And I'm gonna show you the an ETF that exemplifies that. And it is computer software stocks. And this is SKYY, it's Cloud Computing ETF. So a lot of these computer software stocks that have been outpacing the broader markets are cloud-based and they're enabling users to, uh, from various companies, uh, employees that work remotely, the ability to store your information in the cloud and access it at will. So what you'll see within the computing area. Let's go ahead. I'm going to take you to an interface within stockcharts.com in the first page, and we can take a quick look at the sector summary. And from here, we have technology. And once we are in the technology sector, let's take a quick look. And what I'm going to be pointing out to you is how you can quickly uncover those computer software stocks that are exceptional as far as their uh, technical rating. There's the scooter, S-C-T-R, for those of you not familiar, and the higher the number, the better. So what we are looking at here are computer software stocks. By accessing that uh, sector, you can then uncover the individual stocks. So up here in the forefront, these are your 
winners, you're better performers. And uh, I'm actually quite familiar with a number of these stocks because I have a biweekly newsletter and I'm seeing that three of these stocks are on our suggested holdings list. So we can take a quick look at one of them. This is Viva Systems, V-E-E-V. -E -E take a look at this pop, this gap here. This was in late August. The company it reported earnings, very, very exceptional numbers. And so this particular, what you'll find within software is that these companies have various industries that they focus on with their software products. So Viva is a medical uh, software company and they provide services to the medical community. So this is this big gap up on earnings and we've seen this with a number of software stocks. The companies are expanding, their growth is exceptional and their prospects remain quite strong. So for those of you that maybe will see this type of big move in a stock, you might think that the uh, move is behind you. Oftentimes not. What will happen is analysts will continue to revise their estimates higher following the earnings release. They'll dig in, uh, perhaps meet with management and uncover that the growth prospects are really quite exceptional going forward. So this is your 10-day simple moving average that I spoke about. Ideally, you want this stock to continue to find support at this upward trending 10-day simple moving average. And then your RSI up here is in positive territory. This green area means that the stock is currently a bit overbought, but that should not steer you clear. It can stay in that overbought position for some time. And then your MACD down below, it had that positive crossover, the black line up through the red, and it remains in a positive territory. Let's take a look at another one of the top stocks that was on that scooter as far as the ranking higher highest to lowest. This is APPF is the ticker symbol. This is a smaller company, Appfolio. They are in the real estate industry. And another example of a stock, and this is an even better one because it'll provide you with the insight that indeed after a big pop these guys reported in the beginning of August a nice significant move how the stock can indeed advance quite a bit higher this is a 12 percent advance above this gap up on the earnings and again you will see a lot of this with these computer software stocks because not only are they enjoying strong earnings and sales, they have uh, what are called recurring revenues because once they have a customer come and sign up for their services, this is salesforce.com, CRM, yet another example. And in fact, we can uh, even take a quick look at Adobe that came out with earnings today. Nice big pop here. So consumer, uh, I will tell you, computer software is an area that I would suggest that you take a closer look at. It has been doing well and it is uh, continuing to outshine. So those are the areas as far as what's hot. We need to take a look at what's not. And Aaron did talk about downgrades within the uh, semiconductor space and Micron is one of the big bellwether stocks there. So MU is the ticker symbol. And you can see that this is a stock that is continuing to break down. I'm showing you a weekly price chart. And once the stock breaks below this 50 day simple moving average, you can see the pickup here on the volume that is really quite negative. And so what we are seeing is lower selling prices for these memory chips. So it's really spreading out. Uh, Goldman Sachs also downgraded the stocks in this area. This is LRCX LAM Research, another very negative. And uh, these stocks do have, they are very cyclical. They had a similar downturn back in 2015 that lasted for six quarters, but not all semiconductors are down. It's very specific to these DRAM and NAND uh, memory chips. So that's not hot. And then Let's take a look at another area that really has been suffering, and that is financial stocks. I know they are bouncing today, but uh, KRE is the ETF for the 
regional banking stocks. And what we have been seeing are is really definite weakness in these bank stocks. This is a daily view. It's giving you a better look at this continued weakness in bank stocks. And the reason for that is quite simply the spread between the yield on the 10-year treasury and the two-year treasury has really been quite narrow. So these banks, they make their profits if you see a big spread between those two yields, because that's how they make their profits. What they do is they lend using the uh, higher interest rate, and then they actually uh, are borrowing from the lower interest rates. So what we are seeing is as those spreads thin, their profit margin prospects are lowered. So here's a look at Wells Fargo, WFC, and you can see just how weak the this stock has been. Uh, PNC is another rather large regional bank. And so this is an area that is not hot and uh, one that you can generally steer clear of. This is Bank of America BAC. And then one last area that has not been so hot. There have been pockets of strength, but overall, and that is a number of these restaurant stocks. And actually, let's take a look at uh, an example. This is K uh, Cheesecake Factory, C-A-K-E. And another area where Goldman Sachs downgraded a number of these stocks because there were concerns over labor cost being high, and then also delivery fees. A lot of these companies are, in fact, are using uh, delivery services to ramp up their earnings. However, it is viewed to be negatively impactful. So that's what's hot and what's not. What I did want to move on to now is taking a look at some stocks that are really super strong here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to get to all of them. But in my work throughout the week, I'm constantly screening the markets, looking for that next big winning stock. And periodically, a couple of stocks will come up and it'll capture my eye. And I'll wonder, now, why the heck is that stock so strong? Why is it going up? And here is a perfect example. This is WWE. And the company is World Wrestling Entertainment. And for those of you not familiar, this is a uh, organization that has basically uh, sports content. And th what they're doing is they're monetizing the wrestling entertainment industry. So they have these characters that dress up uh, for these various weekly TV shows and they do basically fake wrestling. It's something that was very, very popular 15, 20 years ago, but it has picked up. Now take a look, we're looking at a weekly price chart and you can see these big significant updraft in this stock. And so I dug in, did a little work and I'm gonna share with you what I uncovered as far as why that strength has been there but even more importantly for you is why the anticipation and the expectation is that this stock could very well have another leg up it's about a seven billion dollar company and they're on track to grow their earnings 23 percent year over year this year but next year the estimates are for growth of 67 percent on their earnings. And about two weeks ago, Citibank came out, they raised their price target to 95, and the stock right now is at 87. So let's talk about why this stock has really been a powerhouse. And I'll tell you, quite simply, the popularity of their shows, they have, it's called Smackdown is one, Raw is another, and it's really been quite popular. Uh, oftentimes people would think, well, that would be for kids. They'll be interested in watching this fake wrestling shows, but not so. They actually have a huge uh, increase in the average age of viewership. And it's the average age has jumped to 54. So the average viewer's age is, is up there. So they have a broad based uh, viewership. And a lot of that is because of nostalgia. And more importantly, as far as driving earnings, the company 
had signed on September 4th a deal with Fox Sports that is worth four times what their previous agreement had been with NBC. So huge pickup there. But they've also have direct to consumer streaming services. They have paying subscribership. It's now at 1.8 billion and it's really popped up their operating margins. They've jumped from five to 8%. So overall their fans have consumed 509 million hours of its programming over the last six months. That's a 71% improvement year over year. And so they're expecting that this online live streaming service is really going to pick up. They are seeing continued revenues. They're also pushing into other areas, into India in 2017. Now they have their sights set on Japan. So this, uh, while it already has had an explosive area of growth, the prospects again uh, remain strong. We're seeing Wall Street upping their estimates. Let's take a look at another stock that caught my eye and again, uh, my curiosity as far as why that this particular stock has really had a pickup. And the ticker symbol for this next one is MTCH. And the stock, the company is called Match dot com. And I'm going to see if I can pull up a daily price chart so you can get a better view of this. And match.com is a an uh, mobile online uh, dating service. It's a $16 billion company. And for those of you not familiar, the company had uh, over the last two years purchased a company called Tinder. And this is one of the most popular dating apps of millennials. Those are individuals in their 20s and 30s. And so 27% of millennials that are single have a subscription to Tinder. And Tinder is renowned for having a service and ability to match individuals. You swipe onto uh, the uh, image of an individual. And if you swipe right, that means that you like them. If you swipe left, you don't. So they have, uh, but let's talk about why they're growing. And you can see in particular a significant pickup in the stock's price this week alone. And this is another stock, another area where their growth is due to online subscribership has really picked up. But this week in particular, the company Tinder launched what's called Top Picks. So what they have is you can, with Tinder, you can purchase what's called the gold feature. So that is an added fee, subscriber fee. And then this new Top Picks feature, they the company matches individuals together based on their hobbies, their likes, their education. And so it's really helping the users narrow down their prospects. And so what they have found is with this top 10, they did a pre-launch that individuals want more than 10 choices. So you can purchase more top picks in bundles. So what they are finding is uh, Tinder Gold is their existing product, and it became the top, top, the highest grossing app uh, in the App Store, in the Apple iPhone. So their membership is soaring. They added 300,000 new members last quarter, and the expectation is that they are going to continue to grow. This is another global company. So what I would do with this stock here is you can see that it's a bit extended. It's well above that 10-day simple moving average. The stock is in this overbought position, MACD remains strong, but I would look for some sort of a pullback uh, or at the very least a pause. Oftentimes stocks after having this type of explosive move, it will trend sideways digesting that move. So rather than chase the stock, but again, it's a strong one. And I will have to leave it at that. I had one more, why is that stock up? But I can certainly review that at another time. And until then, one last area that is hot this week, for those of you that follow global markets, the Chinese market has been in a bear market and it's been down over 25%. And what I wanted to point out to you is that the Chinese market, it's not quite yet reversing here yet. And 
Uh, I wanted to get the ticker symbol. This is not, this is microchip technology, which is yet another uh, poor performing semiconductor stock. Oh, MCHI is one of the ETFs for the Chinese market. And so you can see how in a lot of this has to do with the trade talks and uh, tariff potential imposing by Trump. So the Chinese market has sold off significantly. But what I wanted to point out to you is, and it's had these other periods where it potentially tries to reverse that downtrend. We would have to see the index, in this case, break above these simple moving averages before anything got constructive enough to be super interesting. But there are within that a number of Chinese related stocks that are trying to reverse their downtrends. These are not pretty charts by any means, but it was something worth noting the fact that the Chinese market is trying to reverse their recent downtrend. So I believe, Erin, uh, my my time is up. Yes. Well, actually, I you have some more time. We don't need to start until 9.50. I do see- Oh, wonderful. Uh, okay. Yeah, I do see a question, though, that you could answer. Um, sure. You know, what would be a good entry point on the stocks that you just reviewed? I mean, most of them have already had some stellar runs. You bet. You bet. So that's where those key simple moving averages are really going to be helpful in guiding you. So for these faster moving stocks, I know a lot of individuals on stockcharts.com use a 20 day simple moving average, but for these high flying growth stocks, a 10 day simple moving average is going to be your friend. So what you are going to look for is perhaps a pullback to that simple moving average or as I suggested, the stock will trend sideways and digest and at some point that 10 day simple moving average will meet the stock. So that would be your entry point uh, as far as getting into these faster moving stocks. Now, I can talk about one other, why is that stock moving uh, if you'd sure. like? Yeah, so let but me go. Too, if oh. you could, uh, while you're doing that, um, mm -hmm. there's just a few questions as well. One was, uh, you use a simple moving average rather than EMAs. You so, bet. Mm -hmm. uh, and why a 10-day, not a 20-day? So sort of uh, talk about your your um, methodology there. And You bet. Uh, yeah, and then there was concerns about uh, gaps filling as well. Okay, super. I'll go ahead back and let's take a look at uh, the stock. In fact, we can take a look at match.com and use that as a good example as far as identifying your potential buy points. And I'll tell you as far as why I use simple moving averages as opposed to exponential. And the primary reason is for many, many years, I worked with institutional portfolio managers, hedge fund managers, uh, money managers that had a lot in the way of assets. And what has been certainly known over the years is that these institutions with their large uh, money that they need to put to work, they actually create the chart. So it's really useful as an investor if you can uh, uncover what they are utilizing because they their eyes, their movements. Uh, so in my many years of working with them, the simple moving average is what these institutions use. That's what they look at. So as an individual investor, I want to also key in because when a stock, you can see this gap up here on earnings. This is match.com, a daily chart. This is a gap up on earnings. Take a look at that pullback to that 10 day simple moving average and that presented itself as a buying opportunity. Again, the stock did get a bit ahead of itself, pulled back again to that 10 day simple moving average and advanced. Now there is an art to this because you will see stocks that will break below that 10 day simple moving average. And that's where these other indicators are gonna be quite helpful because take a look at the RSI up here. It still remains above this dashed. So this is your net neutral. So it does remain in positive territory during this break below the 10 day. So it's not uh, alarming and you can stay with the stock even though the MACD had a negative crossover, it's still up here in the positive territory. So you can see quite simply this week, the stock 
has very much gotten ahead of itself. We can take a look at another uh, outside of this realm, but it's a faster moving stock. This is Etsy, E-T-S-Y, another stock where it had this gap up on significant, in fact, that was not earnings, that was an announcement by the company, but you can see the nice orderly pullback to this 10-day simple moving average. Now, this pullback to the 50 happened with a lot of consumer stocks uh, because they just fell out of favor during the end of July into the beginning of August. <clears throat> and it really presented itself as a wonderful buying opportunity for some of these faster moving. But that is a, a good way. And I believe now I... <laughs> Run out of time. Oh, my gosh. We don't do that to our guests. We <laughs> run out of time. If they have something to say, everybody wants to hear. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I, I can quickly review one other stock that had crossed my radar. So I talked about high growth, these faster moving stocks. And all of my work, I'm looking for high quality stocks. I need to see earnings. I need to see revenues. And then I also need to see growth prospects going forward. So here is another stock that kept crossing my radar, coming up as a high quality growth stock that looked poised for more upside. And I just couldn't understand why uh, it's B-O-O-T. And the company is called Boot Barn Holdings. And I just couldn't understand why Boot Barn was such a, a fast moving uh high growth stock. So I, there's here's another one where I dug in, did a little work. So you can see this is in line with a, num a number of stocks in the apparel space. It's pretty selective as far as those that are working, but the ones that are have really been exceptional. So this is a weekly chart of Boot Barn. And uh, let me share with you what I uncovered with this stock. So um, on August, I'm sorry, in August, you can see this gap up here. And this is as the company reported earnings. And during this period, they came in with their fifth consecutive quarter of same store sales that were double digit. So exceptional as far as their their growth for five quarters. So why are boots? Does suddenly everyone love and enjoy wearing boots? Well, the fact of the matter is, it's not just the country Western variety of boots that I thought, because when you see this company, uh, when you see them advertised, that's what you're going to see. But it's actually they do work boots and work apparel. That's their number one re underlying revenue source is work boots and work apparel. And primarily uh, what they have uh, uncovered is the fact that their biggest market is Texas. And the reason for that and the reason for their recent growth with the work boots and work apparel is the pickup in oil and gas companies. So for those of you that follow energy, you might note that energy, the price of oil is up into $77 per barrel. It's picked up the market there. So what they have found is workers that are uh, in the oil and gas, they need work boots, they need apparel for these oil fields. And so that's been a big push as far as their growth. But more importantly, let's talk about their growth prospects going forward. They have initiated, they have a men and women's Western wear. And that's been an area within a popular music, a Western, uh, well, country is a better word for it, but uh, very, very robust. And so what they have done is they've seen their e-commerce sales pick up quite a bit, double digit, and the company's rolling out these private brand products that are appealing to these uh, men and women that would like to dress like their favorite country star. And so they have uh, really seen a pickup in the Western wear market. And that's where their expectation for future growth is, is coming. And also the company is opening a lot of stores. They, uh, into first quarter of next year, they're gonna be opening a total of about 20 new stores. And that of course is going to really provide a pickup in their growth prospects. So for 2019, they're already into uh, 2019. They just reported their first quarter. Their projected earnings growth is 49% 
over 2018. So that's a nice pickup there. It's a smaller company. It's about 800 and 50 million uh, as far as size. But 2020, the expectation is high double digit earnings growth. So uh, continued growth prospects for this stock. And so this is one you can see where currently it is breaking down a little bit below the 10 day simple moving average. So when these stocks do could break as they will below any kind of uh, simple moving average, you want to pay attention to the volume. So if, for instance, today it's breaking down a little bit, you if we do get a pickup in volume, that is going to be more telling than not that potentially more downside is ahead of it because that volume is institutions coming in and changing their outlook for that stock. So in as a, for instance, we can see this huge pickup here uh, on their release of the prior quarter earnings, the big pickup in volume. Um, so that is something that you want to pay attention to. So I can all right leave it at that. Excellent. Yep, I think you answered most of the chat room questions as well. If there's any that come in later, uh, I do know somebody was mentioning how you calculate your stops. Um, Oh, for a particular stock. Well, I actually have a pretty strict rule in place as far as uh, investing. Generally, you don't want your losses to exceed six to certainly not eight percent. So uh, it really would depend on an individual's tolerance, if you will. But uh, as far as from that purchase point. All right. Excellent. OK, well, I do have a bunch of 10 and 10 requests. And, oh, super. Yep. So we'll go ahead and start the 10 and 10 and I will show you the RRG. Make sure that that's coming through here. Okay. Hopefully you can see my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. All right. So I, I do an RRG and today I used a daily one. And what we look for are those Northeast travelers. Um, I think we had a few in here. Uh, that I, I put in. And then additionally, really interesting today, Mary Ellen, you don't do this obviously a lot with us, but we had uh, three consumer staples, which we rarely yes. get. Uh, a cyclical, cyclicals usually fill up a good portion of the list. And we have an, an energy one, which we don't necessarily get. And then one financial. So very interesting, still very heavy in technology, but look at all these industrials. That's just very unusual as well. So yeah. it certainly tells you where the interest lies currently in the market. So I find that interesting, but it's Cons always up there. <laughs> yeah, consumer staples have really picked up over the last two weeks. And one of the drivers, about a week and a half ago, there was a huge in Boston consumer staples Barclays Bank puts it on annually, and the CFOs, CEOs of many major corporations present it, and it really caused a snowball effect as far as analysts upgrading a number of these consumer staple stocks, and for and rightly so. I was reading a number of the reports. The growth prospects are there as far as domestically and globally for a lot of these staples. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to, um, we'll go ahead and I'll pass it back to you um, for you to create your chart, 10 in 10 chart list and show everybody how easy it is to do that. Sure. Um, the very first one, so go ahead and share. Yep. The first symbol is going to be Adobe, as we said, A-D-B-E. Oh, super. Yes. So we did touch on this a bit briefly earlier, and the company came out with very strong earnings today. It's up about two and a half percent on the day. So I think as you can tell from my charts, I like to keep it fairly simple as far as the indicators that I use. Uh, what I am using are ones that I've found over my many years to be really quite powerful and quite useful. So we'll touch on it again. This is the RSI up here. You can see how it is above that net neutral and trending upward, which is quite positive. And then also we have the MACD above this net neutral zero, and uh, also heading constructively positive. Now let's take a quick 
look, well, we can do this on the daily as well. I like to look for patterns within the stock, identifying breakouts. So a saucer type pattern here, we can see, and that's gonna be about two weeks of activity. So the stock today is breaking out of a two week base. And we can see we're still uh, have plenty of time left for today's market which indicates that the volume probably will be exceptional. So a breakout on volume on earnings, super bullish. So excellent. That's All right. So the next one that we pick usually is the most popular in the chat room. And I'm going to do that again. And it is Pivotal Software. So PVTL. What are you seeing on that chart? OK, sorry. <laughs> Okay, PV, PVTL, very good. Yes, Pivotal Software. And so we talked about the software stocks coming in. Now, I'm certainly not sure why it has had this gap down, but I will tell you, You let me go ahead and annotate this so that we can um, present our points a little more clearly. So what I did want to point out quite clearly is the RSI has broken down below that net neutral. And also, if we take a look at this break, take a look at that volume. It is really significant going back over. We would have to go back to this June period. I'm presuming this is perhaps an earnings release, but this drop on the volume is again telling you that institutions are exiting and they're showing their move and it does usually imply further downside now oftentimes i talked about stocks getting extended above their 10-day simple moving average the same will occur on the downside so this is super and by that i mean the spread between the price and the position of that 10 day simple moving average. So you may very well see a stair step, maybe a couple of days up, but generally speaking, this is your warning shot that there is further downside possibly ahead. And if this 10 day crosses down through that 50 day, similar to this period, that is known as a death cross. So, uh, so that is the skinny on this one. I would like to also, we can take a quick peek at the weekly, but uh, that is. All right. Excellent. Good. Yeah, we got to go. We we try to do each one in about uh, a minute. Oh, or less. I'm sorry. Oh, my no, gosh. No, everybody wants to hear what you have to say. So <laughs> no worries. No worries. Oh, OK. The sentiment doesn't always take a long time. So we're we're good. OK, super. Um, the next one is Quinn Street, Q-N-S-T. That okay. Is a media agency. You bet. Okay. So while we're in this position, let me just take a quick peek because I do like to look at the weekly price chart. That can be really quite telling because the daily, as you drill down into your time frame, it will get a little more volatile. And so this 10 day becomes a 10 week or a 50 day. And if the stock's able to retain a position above that, your RSI on the weekly. So longer term, you're okay. But I will tell you, it is not the healthiest looking stock. We'll go back to this daily very quickly and you can see that the stock i like to look at historically how stocks tend to trade and you can see this tends to have upward moves down drafts upward moves so a bit more neutral but not positive on this stock all right uh I didn't curious what you think about this drug retailer pet med express and mm -hmm. ets because i just got a buy signal on my pmo so it, it actually looks intriguing you bet. And this is something that I was hoping to, I didn't get to touching upon it, but there's been a big move toward the humanization of, of pets. And this is one example. But looking at this, I can see where you may have gotten a positive signal. But I will tell you, historically, the stock will have to break not only above the 50, but ideally above that 200 day simple moving average. And you wanna use history as your example. Here, the stock is starting to turn positive. Be eventually, you need to have this shorter term simple moving average turn 
up. And ideally, that crossover would occur in conjunction with positive signals from the RSI and the MACD. So we're still not out of the woods yet. This downward trending 50-day simple moving average is going to create a really heavy barrier. So uh, once we get up above it and it starts pulling these simple moving averages up, you're going to be in a much better position. Your MACD is still not quite positive yet. So, uh, All right. This one's interesting, I think. Um, let's see. Slumber J. You know, that it's in an industry group that's been doing really well uh, in oil equipment and services, but relatively, it's just not at all performed. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah, Slumberjay is a company, they came in with earnings below estimates. They announced a share buyback that caused the stock to have a little bit of an upward move, but subsequent to that, it has been really an underperformer, not where you want to be. And we're seeing this with a lot of the bigger E&P uh, energy stocks. So this is another example where your key simple moving averages are in a downtrend. You're getting this potential turn here. But again, you are going to want to use history as your guide. So this is the kind of action you're going to want to see. The price above your simple moving average, pulling the shorter moving average up, combined with a positive RSI and a positive crossover on the MACD. So we're not quite there yet. I can see where someone would want to bottom pick this and potentially get in. But uh, from my work, you're not out of the woods yet. This is a heavy downward pattern with the 50 day simple moving average. You can see how it's acted as a ceiling on the way down. Okay, excellent. Uh, an industrial and building materials, US concrete, and that is USCR. Oh, okay. I, I see a theme here. <laughs> uh, yes. So you can see this is another one. It's had actually an eight, 10 month downtrend here in place. And the stock is again, trying to turn. And again, history as your guide, you can see we've had other potential turns that have failed all with this heavy 50 day simple moving average acting as a barrier. So if we are able to break above that and combine it with your other indicators, you want to also see volume that would make this a bit more interesting. But again, you will want to have systems in place because we can see that it had an attempt here that faltered. So systems in place to stem potential losses. Uh, ideally, I work better if I knew what the earnings and sales outlooks were for the stock. But uh, at this point, we're still a little too early on this potential turn, but I can see where it would be interesting. All right. I have a semiconductor for you next. Uh, Broadcom, AVGO. Oh, yeah. They had a nice pop yesterday. And so this is in line with what we're seeing within the semiconductor space. There are some haves and have nots, but it's had uh, a little bit of volatility here with upgrades and downgrades to the semiconductor space. But this is another one that if it is able to break above this 200 day, that's the blue line, 200 day simple moving average, it would make it a bit more interesting. But given the inherent volatility in this stock, it would not be of a lot of interest to me. I tend to like stocks that are more firmly in uh, an uptrend. But uh, again, a break above the 200 would make this a lot more compelling because you need to not only flatten out, but have this 50 day simple moving average in an uptrend to support a continuation of any kind of upward movement. All right, excellent. Uh, three more to go. Okay. Uh, uh, UUP. And the person said they're seeing a head and shoulders here. I, I could see you making a case for that, but I'm more interested in that rising bottoms trend line that's uh, tried to, uh, you know, be broken yesterday. Not quite. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to have to go back and annotate these because I'm, I'm not doing so now. But yes, what I think what perhaps you're pointing out is this. Uh, I can certainly do it very quickly. But the fact that the stock is testing a potential area of support. So we can, 
Yeah, I mean, you can Sorry see about that. Yeah, no problem. I'll I'll send you this list and, and we'll get them all uh, annotated for everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, so you can see where the stock at about 25, it, ten, it tends to find potential support there, making that interesting. But at this juncture, you're not getting a clear cut signal as far as that RSI trending up into positive territory and your MACD, ideally you would like to have that black line up through the red while it is in this positive position. So this is another one that is is not quite ripe, but it is potentially getting there. Okay, excellent. Yeah, with UUP, I know with the dollar I've been, um, you know, I've been actually quite bearish just because of the momentum, but, um, and now that what could be considered a head and shoulders, I think you could make a case for it mm -hmm. uh, with an upsloping neckline. But again, that upsloping neckline is that rising bottoms trend line. So I'm watching that pretty closely. I, I don't think it's going to survive it. Uh, okay, uh, number nine and 10, we'll do these real quick. DXCM is the number nine one. Okay. And this is Dexcom, and this is one that we can see similar to other stocks where it had this gap up, I'm presuming, on earnings. And while you're continuing to find support at this upward trending 10-day simple moving average, you are in good standing. Now, oftentimes when a stock trends sideways, you will see this MACD trend downward, but it's not alarming. You're still in good standing with this stock. All right. And the last one uh, looks, I think they must have had some earnings news or something, but NISource, NI, down over 11% right now Ooh. on a giant gap down. Darn, yeah. Okay. And just taking a quick peek, this volume is telling us everything we need to know. The stock has this gap down. Again, it very extended below that 10 day. So you may see a little bit of a pickup, but what you're going to want to pay attention to here is how the stock closes. If it's able to find buyers on this dip, close in the upper portion of the trade, trading range, that would be bullish. If we close the day in the lower portion, that is going to be disturbing because that volume is really telling us that it's caught the attention of a number of investors. So at this juncture, we're going to want to pay attention to the close, but it does not look healthy. All right. And these are the symbols that we just went over. Uh, I will get those to Mary Ellen, and I know she'll annotate them up beautifully. So I'll yeah. have up this <laughs> afternoon, uh, evening for the East Coast. So you can look for them there in the Market Watchers Live chart list. And all you have to do is go to the blogs and uh, look on the Market Watchers Live blog, and that's where you'll find that link. All right, uh, time for our final market update, and then I'm going to scoot right on into sentiment. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, what has been going on since we last left the market? Well, as we can see that, uh, you know, interestingly, look like things were going well. We Everything was up, but we've now started to see the markets turn down. The Dow is now down over 72 points. The S&P 500 down uh, 7.35 points. And you can see that the NASDAQ has also reached negative territory. OEX also in the red right now, looks like it's just about closed the gap up that we had yesterday at the open. Uh, mid caps still staying positive as a, is the Russell 2000, but they are both coming right down toward yesterday's close. We'll have to see if they can hold a positive close at, into the end of the day. TSX, Canadian markets are also down right now. Treasury yields, uh, gapped up on the open, uh, have been starting to come a bit back down, but they're, they're still up, currently reading 2.985% for the 10-year Treasury. UUP is on its way up, a uh, big gap up here, and yes, now continuing to rise at that 2520 level. GLD gold is down today, despite, as I showed you earlier, the XAU being higher. Uh, it does look like it might be trying to make a rebound out of a declining trend, but we'll have to keep an eye on that into the close as well. TLT gap down, but now trying to make its way back up into positive territory. USO 
uh, down a kind of a choppy trading day down in the uh, near the open, made it all the way back up to test that gap resistance from yesterday's open and turned right back down. We're currently down uh, two cents on USO, reading at 1447. And that concludes our final market update. So let's go ahead and slide right on into our sentiment report. And I will be making it a fairly quick one, but let's, you know, they usually go pretty fast anyhow. All right. So what we're looking at right now, I'm going to start off uh, the sentiment report today a little differently. I want to start off with the VIX and breadth uh, currently what we're seeing. And the reason I'm, I'm calling this up, breadth isn't necessarily um, a sentiment indicator, but the VIX certainly is used as one. And what I really wanted to point out was that, you know, we usually when we see these penetrations of the Bollinger Band, and remember, I do invert my VIX because I look at high VIX readings as a likely move to the upside in the very short term and the other way around when you get the penetration of that upper Bollinger Band, you usually see a couple days of decline. Well, we're not quite up to that upper Bollinger Band, but we are making our way up toward it. And so that's telling me that we do have, you know, bullish sentiment going into next week. And look at these new highs that came in, uh, that are coming in currently, and the breadth, positive breadth that we had on the advance uh, declines. So I'm seeing what you know, I was thinking it might be a, a buying exhaustion going on here. And, you know, if we if we continue the way we are as far as the, the pop this morning and now uh, falling, that's what we could be looking at is uh, a buying exhaustion here. But the VIX hasn't quite reached that upper Bollinger Band. So uh, I think there could be, we could squeak out a little bit more upside uh, before we uh, turn down. All right, so let's get to the regular sentiment indicators. And whenever I talk about sentiment, I always start the conversation, as those of you who know, watch Stock Charts TV and watch my sentiment reports, I always start with sort of a definition of how we look at sentiment. And with sentiment, what you, it's a contrarian indicator. So when everybody is very bullish, that's actually bearish for the market because that's generally when you're going to see those reversals is when we get very uh, bullish uh, sentiment from investors. You know, everybody is getting on the bandwagon, as I say, and then the wheel falls off. Uh, so that's similar to what we uh, look for. So right now, uh, I'm looking at the put call ratios for the CBOE uh, equity OEX. And uh, I don't pay quite as much attention to the OEX because that's used uh, as uh, somewhat of a hedge. Uh, it doesn't always follow along with the put call ratios of the CBOE and the equity. Uh, so I do pay a little bit more attention to these. And right now, I found it very interesting that we never were able to get up uh, high enough the last two times on these tops uh, to the top of the range for the put call ratio. I think that's very interesting, uh, which means as, as these numbers rise, high readings means and people people are bearish. So we started to get bearish, as you can see here, but we're now starting to top out already. So we never got, people never got that nervous. Uh, we're starting to turn down and that's generally uh, not good for the market. Uh, so, you know, when you see this put call ratio moving down towards the lower side, that means people are starting to get bullish and that will be bearish. But right now what I'm looking at here with uh, these uh, not not getting those put call ratios up high enough on the upside and then starting to see that downturn. I'm honestly reading this chart as, you know, mostly neutral, but I think it really gives us a, a feel as does the VIX, you know, that we had these rising numbers and that meant investors were getting more bearish. We're now starting to turn, meaning people are starting to move into the bullish side of things. So we're sitting in neutral right now. And uh, one of the reasons I think, you know, we still could see a little bit of upside uh, next week um, because I just don't think we have investors, uh, you know, they're just not that, they didn't get that bearish uh, this time around. All right, let's look at the American Association of Individual Investors. This 
chart. Uh, this is a poll that if you go to aaii.org, I believe anybody could take it. And you just put in whether you are bullish or bearish right now. Uh, this isn't based on any trading activity or anything like that. This is just one of those finger in the wind polls. But we do find them very interesting. And one of the things that I wanted to note was this large drop in bulls. You know, we saw people get very bearish here. But again, when we looked at that put call ratio, they didn't get as bearish as they normally get. So I found that was pretty interesting when you compare this to that uh, put call ratio, that uh, 10 day moving average. And, you know, we also got a lot of gains uh, in the bears right now. So, but ultimately when you look at the bull bear ratio, it's almost at one because, uh, you know, we, we have almost the same, same amount of bulls and the same amount of bears. But what I'm really noting here is that drop in bulls and that large increase in bears. That tells me that investors are feeling more bearish. And of course, that is bullish for the market. So I know we're getting some kind of some mixed signals here, and I'll go through that on my summary slide shortly. All right, the National Association of Active Investment Managers. This is, they report how exposed they are to the market. And currently, we're still seeing very high readings on exposure. Uh, we did increase our exposure from last week. Uh, they're not as high as we've seen as far as the exposure goes. But if you look, I've marked the red line to show you how it compares and you can see a lot of white space. And that means that these are still very high readings for exposure at 90.19. And that tells you that uh, money managers are getting more bullish because as you can see in the thumbnail, we did move up on the exposure, but we're still not as exposed as we were the week before that. So I would look at this generally, when you look at these high readings, you're going to see a downswing. This highest historical ranking, however, notice that came, we had a couple of days of sideways action and then we finished up that parabolic move on the uh, S&P 500. So it took, uh, it was a delayed reaction. Uh, typically you're not gonna see that much of a delay in the reaction. Uh, but one of the reasons I think that this uh, is true is that a lot of times these guys are right uh, guys and gals, I should say, a lot of times they are right and uh, to be more exposed. So sometimes you can get a little bit of after effect uh, to the upside as they've increased their exposure. But right now, I would have to say, given, uh, you know, the, the action that we saw last week, uh, where it moved down considerably, you can see right now, as far as the action this week, we're up almost 1% on the week. Uh, so we're getting that move to the upside in the price over the week and we've increased our exposure. So that is overall really, that would be considered bearish because you do have um, you know, this great big move to the upside this week and as well getting that upside move on exposure. I think this leaves us vulnerable to some uh, market action to the downside. All right, we're almost getting to the close here. Uh, let's look at the Ridex analysis. And then I have uh, one or two more charts left uh, for your interest. All right, the Ridex ratio chart. This is uh, exclusive uh, to Decision Point in that you know, we developed this. Uh, there was, at a time, uh, Ridex was a company and they managed uh, mutual funds they have since their business moved to Guggenheim, uh, but we kept the Ridex name because these funds are a basket of funds and they report their assets every single night, how much is currently in each of the funds. And we tally up the assets in the bear funds, the money market funds and the bull and sector funds. And then we start comparing those numbers and come up with our bear bull ratio on the assets. But it's very interesting to see where the money is actually flowing. It's one thing, like with AAII, AAII, to put your finger in the wind and just say, yes, I'm bullish, and then go and buy a bunch of bear funds. You know, it's, it's uh, one thing to say how you feel, and another to look at the numbers, 
the actual trading and what you actually end up doing. And so what I found interesting is, you know, right now we're seeing an in increase in bearish activity here. Now we did get those drop in the, in the poll numbers on AAII. So to me, these are syncing up with that finger in the wind poll. But really notice this increase in those bear funds and those money market funds. And what's happening with the equ equity, you know, the bull and sector funds, we're losing assets out of that. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that investors right now are bearish. They're putting their money on the bearish side of things. Uh, when investors are very bearish, that's bullish for the market. So what we wanna see is here's our right x ratio when you make the comparison between how many um, bear versus bull assets there are this is an inverted scale because the larger the number gets that means there the more bulls we have in the mix and the more bulls and more bullish your ratio gets that is bearish for the market. So we had uh, a pretty high, or I should say low reading, uh, meaning that we had quite a few um, bull assets. We saw people getting very bullish up here. And what happened? Uh, previously, we could see that usually portends some declines in the market. This came about after about mm, two thirds of the way into that drop, but the drop did continue after that. So what is interesting, of course, to look at is now we've got this ratio. It's now moved back into its uh, zone that it's been in since the since mid-May, uh, moving that, getting ready to move mostly sideways. But it's still on the low side. Remember, inverted scale. It's still on the low side. There's still a lot of um, money in those bull funds. So. You know, we are seeing that gr the greater activity in the bear funds, but overall, when you tally up um, and do your ratio, we're still looking at, you know, we're starting to see a decrease. Um, well, again, I, I hate doing this to everybody with these inverted scales. We're seeing a greater uh, move here in the, in the ratio, moving higher. And that, of course, tells us there is more action in those bear and money market funds. But we're not getting uh, the kind of action I would like to see this ratio get farther down in this zone. Uh, that would line us up for a pretty nice move to the upside. Look at where we've hit when we've hit the, the bottom of the zone uh, previously back here. So we've had some moves to the upside after we get investors uh, very um, uh, bearish. So I think that's one of the more interesting of the charts that we have. Uh, that I'm going to go ahead and close it off because I know we're starting to get down here to the end. But let me look one more time quickly before we pull up that sum summary slide. I wanted to give everybody a, a, a shot uh, to see what's going on with the um, premiums on the Sprott Physical Gold Trust, uh, the premiums and discounts because right now we're seeing really high discounts. And that tells us that uh, investors are very bearish about their gold uh, investment. Uh, and again, sentiment is contrarian. So that's actually bullish for gold. And like I said, you know, you've got the PMO buy signal and it's moving higher. And remember with the dollar, uh, it's showing weakness. It's getting ready to break down below rising bottom support. So I thought it was interesting. I did want to uh, concentrate just a little and let everybody know that we're still seeing really bearish activity as far as the discounts on the Sprott Physical Gold Trust. So I would, I'm still ready to see it move to the upside. All right, let's close this out, Mary Ellen. There's my sentiment update. I will have that in the um, in the Market Watchers Live recap. And you wonderful know, should be good. Thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciated it. Um, we haven't heard from Tom yet as far as how he's doing, but no. our understanding is it's a lot of rain. So. Oh, good, good. Rain, rain we can handle. Oh, uh, nice. those, those winds will get you. Thank you very so, much. Yes, thank you for being here and thank you everybody for being with us today. Remember to complete that survey as you exit because we'd love to get your feedback to hear what you think of Mark Watchers Live. And I'm sure Mary Ellen would love to hear how you um, thought about her presentation and 
guest (laughs) co-hosting. As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Have a great afternoon, everyone, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Happy trading. Thank you.